overview of the agenda and where we're going tonight. I'm going to give a very short platform overview and share some milestones with you guys. After that, my colleague Reeve is going to come up and he's going to share some new features we've been working on with you. And lastly, my colleague Jeremy is going to come up and talk to you about how you can integrate with these new features. But before we get started, I first wanted to tell you guys thank you very much for coming out tonight. We really appreciate it. We wanted you guys to come down here, share a beer with you, and show you some of the things that we've been working on. And equally important, we want your feedback tonight on the products we've been building. We're here to listen. There's a small army of engineers walking around back here from Twitter. They'll have a bird on their shirt. Grab any of us when this wraps. We're excited to talk to you. So over the past couple of years, Twitter's been laser focused on user growth. The service has more than 200 million active users today. And every day these users are generating more than 400 million tweets. So every two and a half days, there are more than a billion tweets going through the system. Twitter has become a massive, globally connected network. Or as our CEO, Dick Costello, likes to say, Twitter has become the global town square. It's the place where people are going to share news articles or post photos, where they're talking about new products with their friends, or learning about the latest apps that people are downloading. Increasingly, they're doing this from their phones. Mobile's always been a core part of Twitter's DNA. More than 60% of the user base accesses the service from a mobile device. And to give a sense of how globally connected the network is, more than 70% of the user base resides outside of the US. And what does this mean for all of you here tonight? How can you guys leverage this in meaningful ways to grow your own app's user base? And that's really where the platform as a distribution mechanism comes into play. On Twitter, there's a reach of more than 200 million active users. And this includes products such as Twitter for Android, Twitter for iPhone, TweetDeck, Twitter.com. But there's also this unique syndication component to the platform, where tweet embeds and timeline embeds allow Twitter content to exist outside of Twitter and be integrated across the web. Tweet and timeline embeds are generating billions of impressions every month. And this is how you can get your content out in front of both Twitter users and non-Twitter users alike. And that's where this distribution flywheel really starts to spin. You as developers or publishers help users send great content into the network. Other users then discover and engage with that content. And many of them will end up tweeting about it themselves. And that starts this cycle of discovery and user acquisition opportunity. And how can you help your users best engage? Twitter cards. Cards allow you to richly represent your content on Twitter. Think of cards as giving context into what sits behind the URL. You're showing a user a preview into where they're about to go. And today, there are three types of cards. There's the summary, which is great for articles or news stories. There's the image card for viewing photos in line. And there's also the player for consuming video or audio. These are very easy to integrate. You literally add a few lines of markup tags to your pages, you get your domain whitelisted with us, and you're rendering cards. Less than a year ago, Twitter had 42 sites using cards. And tonight, I'm really excited to say that there are now more than 10,000 sites integrated with cards. ESPN is using cards this past football season to run instant replays on Twitter. Deadmouse has been using cards to do live video streaming with his fans on Twitter. Angry Birds is now allowing users to unlock new characters from their Star Wars game with cards. And this is just a small sample of the many great partners that are using cards to richly represent their content on Twitter. So now that I've had the chance to talk to you about where cards are at today, I'd like to invite my colleague Reed Thompson up to talk about where cards are going tomorrow. Thanks, Jason. Everyone, as Jason mentioned, uh, I'm Reed Thompson. I am, as the slide says, the product manager at Cards. Super psyched to have all you guys here today to hear kind of what we've been doing um, for the past couple months and what we've been working on. Uh, one little housekeeping note I wanted to mention is so. 
This is a dev event. Um, we wanted to invite a lot of developers and give you guys a first look at what we're releasing. Um, and there's no press here, but you guys are free to tweet about it if you like. So, I really want to cover three things today. Um, and first, I want to talk about a great new feature that we're adding to the Cards platform. Um, secondly, I want to talk about some of the new card types that we're going to be releasing. And third, I want to give you a little sense of where the platform is going in the future. And when we say cards tomorrow, uh, we literally mean tomorrow. So tomorrow we are releasing an I a new iPhone app, a new Android app, and updating our mobile website with the features I'm about to cover. And so before I dive in, I wanted to go back to that 10,000 number that Jason mentioned. And we are both humbled and extremely excited by the 10,000 developers that have chosen to integrate cards. But we think it's just the beginning. And we've been spending a lot of time listening to your feedback and watching how you've integrated. And I think we've learned some lessons and, and figured out how we can really improve the platform to make it more useful for you guys. So I'm excited to walk through some of that stuff with you. And I want to start by talking about mobile apps. As Jason mentioned, 60% of people are viewing Twitter from a mobile device. And that means that most of our users are seeing cards on a mobile device. And a lot of the greatest content that's shared via cards is coming from mobile apps that you guys make. But until now, we haven't done a good job of integrating that experience with the larger mobile app ecosystem. And we wanted to find a better way to take that amazing content that's generated by the apps that you guys make and tie that back into your apps. And so the first thing I want to talk about is mobile app deep linking. So we want to add mobile app deep links to every single card that is generated on Twitter. So if you're checking in somewhere and you uh, add a photo, your tweet gets this great Foursquare card. And at the bottom, you'll see we've now added a link that with a simple tab will jump you into the Foursquare app. And this is where you guys want your users. You want them in your app because that's where they can best engage with your content. They're already logged in usually. And so we think this is a great way to drive more users who see your content on Twitter back into your apps where you can make the most of it. So that's cool if people already have your app, but what about if they don't? So the way we implemented deep linking is we wanted to make it so it checks first to see if that app is installed. And if it's not, it prompts the user to go download that app. And if they tap on this, they're instantly brought to either the Google Play Store or Apple's App Store. And one cool thing on iOS is that they don't even have to leave Twitter to do this. So right away they just tap, they can start installing the app and go right back to reading tweets. So we think this is a big step towards making Twitter the best distribution and discovery mechanism for your apps. And as Jason touched on, we kind of are trying to accelerate this process, this cycle, where users of your apps create amazing content, they share that on Twitter, each of those cards becomes a call to action for more people to download the app, and then those people become creators of great content and distribute that on Twitter. So I think this is a real win-win situation. You guys get new, develop new, new users, and we have some great content to show with the millions of Twitter users all across the world. So let's keep linking. And next I want to talk about some of the new card types that we're going to be releasing tomorrow. So, so far, we have these three card types, and they've done a really great job of representing a lot of content that's out there. But one of the things we noticed early on was that a lot of people were sort of pushing the envelope and trying to do more innovative and interesting things with these three card types. Whether that was representing a check-in uh, via a summary card or a product in an image. And we looked at that and we said, we need to give people more control over how their content was represented and give them more choices about the, you know, how they show their content on Twitter. And so the first place I want to start is again with mobile apps. And I don't know about you guys, but almost every new mobile app that I downloaded, I first heard about on Twitter. But we weren't doing a great job of representing those apps. So we're introducing the app card. And the app card shows the most important information about that app, whether it's on Google Play or in the App Store. And I know probably a bunch of you are thinking, you see this and you say, oh great, now I need another place where I need to update all my app information. 
And we also wanted to make that easy for you. So the markup for using this card is very simple. You just give us the app ID for the relevant app store and we'll go get that information from the app stores. So you just have to keep the information current there and it'll be current on Twitter. And again, like the deep link, just a simple tap and they instantly jump right into the install process. So we think this is a great way for those of you who maybe don't have content to share on Twitter, but you can still represent your apps on Twitter. So next I wanna talk about products, because people love talking about products on Twitter, whether it's something that they want to buy, something that they just bought, or something that they're selling. But up until now, this is the experience that we kind of offered, which is a summary card, and it didn't do a good job of highlighting the most important information about the product. So we designed a product card, and the product card gives you more control over what information you present. You obviously have a preview image there, but then you have two customizable fields that you can choose what information is most important for your products. So in the case of Store Envy, they want to show how many envies these items had. And for Wine Library, they want to show what the rating of that wine was. And we think by better representing products on Twitter will ultimately drive more purchases. So next, I want to talk about the image card. And the image card is one of the most popular cards uh, on Twitter, and it functions pretty well. Uh, lots of people share their images. But we noticed two things about the image card. First, we thought we saw that a lot of these images did not stand on their own. They weren't, uh, they weren't just a standalone image, they were part of a collection of images. But again, we weren't doing a great job of representing the collection as a whole. So we're introducing a gallery card. And the gallery card lets you have four preview images, you can view those right within Twitter, and then with a tap, you can jump in and engage with the entire gallery. The second thing we noticed about how people were using the image card took, sort of took us by surprise. And what we saw was that a bunch of people were using the image card when we actually expect them to use a summary card. They were representing either a blog post or some sort of article. And what we took from that was not that they wanted to use the image card, but they actually just wanted more control over how the information was presented in the summary card. So we have two summary cards, a text-only version and a thumbnail. And now we're introducing a third summary card, which is a large image card. And this functions like a summary card, but has the same visual appeal of the image card. and gives a lot more an inviting image to let people come in and experience your content. So those are the three, or the, those are the new cards that we're introducing. And next I want to bring up some partners that can talk to you about how they've chosen to use Twitter cards in their products. And I want to start with one of the most innovative and beautiful apps out there, Hack. I'm going to invite Dave Warren up to talk about how they view Twitter cards and how they see Twitter cards going forward. So we're really excited to be here supporting Twitter uh, and uh, working directly on the Twitter cards, uh, the new Twitter cards products. Um, we fundamentally believe uh, in bringing people closer together. Uh, Path, we, we, we've designed to be the home inside of Twitter's town square. Um, and it's something where uh, being deeply integrated with Twitter is very important to us. We syndicate more content to Twitter than to any other network. Uh, a key feature of Path is the ability to take any moment that you share on Path and push it to other networks. And Twitter is by far our number one network. And so with these wonderful new features, um, it makes it easier than ever for us to integrate more context into the tweet. At Path, we fundamentally believe that context is king. And so the ability to integrate more context using uh, the new Twitter card types and the ability to give people the, uh, the opportunity to download directly from every single tweet using deep linking. And not only uh, using deep linking to drive downloads, but also to drive people to content inside of our application is an incredibly important thing. It's something we couldn't do before. Uh, I actually fundamentally believe that this is one of the single most important distribution opportunities that's happened on the web or the mobile web in the, in this year. And so uh, I highly encourage you to give it a try. It's very easy um, and we're really excited about it. So thanks for the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
And next, I want to bring up um, someone from a service you all know, but if you haven't checked out their new mobile app, you really should. It's absolutely beautiful, uh, and that's Flickr. And Brett Wayne's going to come up and talk to you about how they're using these new features and the deep linking to promote the Flickr app. So, right. Thanks. For Hi, everybody. It is a bigger room than I expected as well. We, um, we launched our Flickr app 12-12-12 uh, last year. And we have always had a great relationship with Twitter. And one of the things that was really important to us was to make sure that sharing out from the uh, Flickr app to Twitter was really easy. So we did that. And at the time, I asked the developers who were working on this, have we actually taken advantage of everything that Twitter has to offer in their presentation layer? And the answer actually was, well, no, there's probably actually some more stuff we can do. So we're like, let's do that. And that's when we first started using the Twitter cards. And I think it was really simple. From our point of view, the photographers own their content and they make a deliberate sharing decision. So our job is to make that sharing as beautiful as possible for the user. If you want to share it out there, let's actually take advantage of that surface that the distribution network offers. And so we implemented cards. And Chris, who's right here, wave Chris. Chris is the developer who does this. So don't ask me any technical questions. I have no idea I'm just a VP. But Chris actually knows how it works. And I asked him, I'm like, how hard was this? And he said the hardest thing about doing it was actually keeping it a secret. Right? So we, we moved really quickly, we got it implemented, and we've actually now just taken advantage of the new features of the platform. And we actually really like the idea of deep linking as well, because you're on Twitter and you're consuming your photos, and our photos look great there, and we don't want people to leave that context if they don't want to. But once they send a signal saying, like, let me switch context, from Twitter back to Flickr, then getting them very quickly back into the Flickr experience, which we think is a really great way, not only to consume the content, but to understand the photographers, to actually communicate, to have a social graph around pictures. The app switching behavior from deep linking is really important to us. And as Ray mentioned as well, we see it as a really exciting growth opportunity. So we're really happy to partner with Twitter on this, and I want to thank you for letting me come up and say a few words. So we are super excited to see how you can implement these new eight cards. Um, one thing I should mention is if you've already done implementation for the three previous cards, these new cards are totally backwards compatible. So you don't have to do anything new. You'll still get to, you know, the new cards will appear tomorrow in the new uh, build. Um, so there's nothing you need to do. But we're excited to see what you do with these new eight cards. And it's certainly a better choice than three. Um, but really, we think this is just the beginning. And we envision a world with literally hundreds of card types. How are we going to get there? Well, we need your help. Uh, first and foremost, please, as Jason mentioned, there's an army of uh, engineers here, a ton of people from the cards team over there who can raise their hands. So we would love to hear how you guys, what kinds of content you want to represent within Twitter. And we also want to hear how you want that content to be displayed, how you want that information presented. Ultimately, we think that it's our job to create an amazing platform that gives you guys as much control over your content on Twitter as possible, and that you can maximize the benefit from the Twitter platform. And now I'd like to welcome Jeremy Gordon, who's my co-founder in a previous life, uh, and our new VP of, or, sorry, I get them pro. Uh, director of mobile, and uh, he's going to talk, he's going to geek out with you and tell you a little bit about the changes we made under the hood to the platform to make this feature possible. Thank you very much. Thank you. Sweet Mr. Promotion. Developers Hall. Um, so, uh, my name is Jeremy Gordon, uh, and as we mentioned, I'm going to share a little bit about how to integrate with cards. I also want to give you a little behind the scenes tour and, and give you hopefully a little bit of uh, direction into the future of where we are taking the platform, how we think about it. Um, before I do that, I want to talk a little bit about how I came to be at Twitter working on cards. So Reeve mentioned in a former life, um, uh, in 2009, Reeve and I co-founded a company called Cabana. Um, if you haven't heard of Cabana, it's basically like if Keynote and Yahoo Pipes had babies, that'd be like Cabana. So a uh, visual app development platform, everything from HTML, pure HTML apps, to hybrid apps, phone gap style, all the way to completely pure native with no web kit. So um, in 2012, 
uh, Twitter acquired Cabana, and we joined uh, the technology and the people uh, from Cabana joined the Cards team to collaborate on the latest release of Cards. Uh, pro tip, I've since learned if you have logo affinity with potential acquirers, it like, totally helps out, it's awesome. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, just keep that in um, So, uh, going, setting the Wayback Machine to uh, about two years ago, uh, Twitter first introduced the Cards concept with about 40 uh, early partners. Um, super well received, super cool, a uh, lot of, lot of uh, user excitement and the partners that we initially had really excited about it. Um, unfortunately, it had a number of uh, problems and we did a ton of learning from those partners and from our users. So really the problems center around the fact that these early cards incarnations were all done client side meaning that they're all done in the browser, meaning that there's no Twitter server support for these cards. So what, what are these problems? What are the problems of doing that? Um, one of the first problems is, since everything was initiated from all of our hundreds of millions of users' browsers, uh, there's no way for us to guarantee the integrity of that content. Is the content that we're linking off to really the content that you guys intended to serve up? Basically, is it SSL, is it behind SSL? Are we you know, uh, setting ourselves up for cross-site, cross-domain requests, all that good stuff? Um, maybe even more problematic than that was really that, uh, as Jason talked about in his slides, more than 70% of Twitter users are global. And with a totally browser-based solution, we really had no way to guarantee latency, um, low latency experience for users, especially internationally, where a lot of our content partners maybe didn't have the same kinds of systems that Twitter have has to uh, keep it low latency. Also, just if you think about the technical approach to doing something in the browser, we're like firing off tons and tons of requests. Um, client side, which is suboptimal, and we're doing it to tons of different domains if you have lots of cards that you're looking at. Um, uh, the other problem with this is um, uh, our well-meaning users accidentally doing distributed denial of service attacks on uh, content providers, like, oops, sorry, um, particularly bad in like gallery views where we fire off tons and tons of requests and like, um, accidentally routinely take down our partners. Um, and then finally, the other uh, not so small problem is since we were doing all this in the browser client side, uh, really no mobile support. So one of the most important platforms for us, again, as Jason talked about, is mobile. We have uh, a ton of our users on mobile, increasing all the time, it's the fastest growing part of Twitter, um, and really no support for being able to see any of these cards on mobile, um, not setting partners up to succeed with, with uh, mobile display. So, uh, so these were the, the uh, big problems that we faced. Um, so we went back to the drawing board, and about uh, a year ago, um, uh, began a, an effort to rethink how we do this, and really realizing the thing that Twitter can do maybe best in the partnership together, um, we really weren't doing, which is to handle uh, real-time communication at scale. Um, and really, we were just punting all that off onto y'all. So uh, in rethinking about it, it all starts with uh, tweeting. Uh, a URL, um, and so that goes off and hits the generic server um, at Twitter, and then uh, we go out and we look at your website, and we're looking for meta tags in your website, um, and we're uh, scraping all that stuff, and instead of all of our, you know, 30, you know, Justin Bieber tweets out something, 30 million people try to expand that card, and 30 million people in our past solution would go hit some poor service, um, now we one time hit that service, and then we can distribute all that information out the mobile client and show the card. So, um, so that's really cool. And like, really, what's happening under the hood, just uh, to nerd out a little bit for a minute, if you don't mind, um, is our mobile apps going off and it's hitting our API stack. Um, our API stack is jamming that tweet text into our tweet store um, and in queuing it and off the back end of that queue. We do all kinds of fun processing, indexing, good stuff. Um, but one of the consumers off that queue of that tweet is our real time crawler, which is something that uh, we actually initiated. New York, um, so shout out Twitter New York. Um, and that real time pro crawler is caching off all the uh, metadata into a, a massive key value store that's behind massive amounts of cache, blah, blah, blah. So, um, just a side note about our real time crawler this is a big part of what we feel we, how we bring that value to the relationship together. We are crawling literally billions with a B of websites at a very fast clip. Not only do we crawl those sites, um, and cache off all the data so that you don't have to handle that part. Um, we also uh, proxy images. So when we Gaga tweets something or retweets something that's content from your app, instead of having 30 whatever it is, someone, 30 
something million um, followers of Lady Gaga all hitting uh, your photos, um, they hit Twitter. And not only are they hitting Twitter for one particular uh, representation of that image, we are doing all the work to resale, resize that thing, deliver a great content, whether it's on desktop at high DPI or whether it's on you know, high-end mobile devices or on low-end mobile devices at a low DPI that are on high latency networks. We're prepping that content, making those representations available. So um, how does that work in practice? So I think we kind of have a sense of the overview, but, but we start with something like Flickr. Um, and on that uh, web page, there is markup. So if you haven't done this before, haven't seen this, there's meta tag markup. In the cases where there's industry standard uh, meta tags around something we want to do, we, we overlap with that stuff. But in the, in the case of very card specific stuff, like for example, Flickr getting to control how the content's being presented um, in Twitter, um, we have specialized meta tags. So Twitter card is saying, hey, I want to use a photo card. This is how, this is why that photo card comes up instead of a product card, instead of these other cards. So uh, talk about more kinds of specialized uh, markup. This is what a deep link looks like. So a Flickr deep link, where we're, we're letting uh, our uh, real-time crawler know, hey, uh, this is the app, this is the URL that we want to navigate to on either iOS, there's a different um, meta tag for uh, on Android, to be able to jump right into that user's app. So, I mean, I just gave you two quick examples, but uh, tonight, uh, drunkenly, after you've finished hanging out and talking to all of our fabulous engineers, um, if you want to go check out more details on, on this part of it, uh, dev.twitter.com, we've got uh, all new documentation, covers all the deep linking, so, you know, the, the path example that uh, Reed showed and Dave talked about, um, how, how does that app install work, how does the, wait, how do you deep link enough to know how to app install, and all those kind of nerd out details are up on our website. It's not just docs, though. So uh, we listened and learned from the 10,000 uh, partners, and um, we've done a new revamped set of tools up on dev.twitter.com. So this is everything from trying to decide what card is the right card, and increasingly this catalog will, we hope, grow and grow. Um, so that'll become an important part. But then also being able to reach out and validate. So uh, kicking our um, real-time crawler in the wherever um, to go out and, uh, and scrape and look and see, like, did you put in the deep link just right? Did you get the, the description right? All that kind of stuff. Um, and, and validate that. And then even um, before, maybe you don't have control over that part of the website because you're like the iOS developer, um, but you still want to fool around with this and experiment. Or maybe you're a startup and you are the iOS developer and the web developer in any event. Um, you uh, can play around with the markup without having actually implemented it. You can try out the different card types and all the tags and, um, and have some confidence that what you're going to tell somebody or what you're yourself going to uh, put into your website is going to be the right thing. So that, as Reeve said, to steal one or two of his slides to make my presentation easier to do, um, that's great for the eight card types that we know about today, but how are we going to get to thousands, hundreds or thousands of different card types? Um, uh, we're, the approach that we were using for cards in the past that I showed you in this slide um, is, is not, we think, going to scale um, to get that many uh, cards. So uh, the approach that we're using today, that we're launching tomorrow in the, uh, the, the uh, iOS and Android clients and on mobile web and desktop web, is that it starts again with the tweet. Everything starts with the tweet with the URL. Um, and we go off and do our thing on the uh, back end. But then we go and we hit up uh, our card service and request our card type. And our card type is coming down, and we aggressively cache those, of course. Um, but down to our mobile client, and that is helping us configure the layout and display of, uh, of the card. So, card type, what's that? Uh, uh, basically, it's a CSS3 flexible box inspired uh, uh, renderer, um, uh, but heavily mobile optimized. Um, and basically, this is the way, why are we doing this? This is so that Twitter engineers can work on new card types, and uh, we can uh, tweak with you at a rapid iteration clip um, to get the you know call to action in the right spot. Or like if we're talking about like in a whole new category of card that we should be doing, we can rapidly uh, iterate on that together with you. So that's where cards is today. And if you think about sort of how that scale problem, we're really really interested in hearing from you. Uh, what you think about that? Where do you think? What kinds of roles do you think you could play in that? Um, I'd like to point out in particular, we've got a bunch of mobile engineers, we've got a bunch of cards, uh, back-end engineers. 
for some reason, they all seem to have clustered over in this area. Um, and we've got our, our VP of platform over there. So please, um, thanks for so much for coming out. But please, uh, second ask, uh, drink more, eat more, and go talk to some of those guys over there and tell them what you think. Tell them what you're looking to do. Tell them about new card types. Talk about some of the tooling and things, what you'd like to see, where you'd like to see us go next. Um, and that's pretty much it. I'm going to turn it back over to Jason. Thanks, Dan. Thanks, Jason. So guys, just a very quick recap here, and then we'll let you go get some food and some drinks. Uh, we talked about the platform distribution opportunities and how much reach is available when you integrate with the Twitter platform. We've unveiled the new app install and deep linking capabilities that are now available in parts. And I just want to reiterate that these new deep, deep linking capabilities are globally available across all cards. So the, if you're already using the old summary card or the photo card, you can now integrate these deep linking capabilities into the old cards as well as the new card types. We also covered the new card types, so we talked a little bit about the new product card, app card, and also the gallery card for featuring multiple images. And then lastly, Jeremy just gave you a little overview of how these things work under the hood and how you can start to integrate them yourselves. So, guys, thanks again for coming out tonight. We really appreciate you spending your evening with us. This is our contact information if you have any questions. Uh, that's also my email, that's Dream. I'm very public with that, so reach out anytime if you have any questions or need help. And thanks again for coming out. Thanks, guys. I'm going to throw in one last quick shout out, which is uh, we also have Jeff Siebert, uh, one of the co founders of Crashlytics, in the house. So, super awesome. If you haven't checked out Crashlytics, come across him. You'll love that I'm saying this. Um, so, uh, iPhone, Android, uh, super awesome. Free crash analytics. Uh, Crashlytics, yay! Thanks, guys.